The following is an analysis, interpretation, and summary of James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. Chapter 12, The Law of Least Effort. This is the second component of Law 3 of Habit Formation, how to make habits easier. And now we're going to talk about how energy is a precious resource and the brain is wired to conserve it where possible. Our bodies and brains want to take the path of least resistance that requires the least work. It is biomechanically and energetically more efficient. Why wouldn't we want to do that? We want to conserve energy so we don't have to find and consume as much. Therefore, prolonging survival and procreation. So, how do we now turn this into habit formation and understanding the brain, psychology and human behavior better? How to achieve more with less effort. Trying to pump up your motivation to stick with a hard habit is like trying to force water through a bent hose. You can do it, but it requires a lot of effort and increases the tension in your life. Making your habits simple and easy is like removing the bend in the hose. A lot of people try and pride themselves on doing a habit because it's difficult. And overcoming that difficulty is like pushing through the bend in the hose and just forcing us, forcing just the sheer willpower and discipline to just grit your teeth and just eat shit sandwiches and, and do things that are hard. And I think there is huge value for children, people who don't have a lot of discipline and who haven't experienced difficulty and hardship in their life. I think there is great utility for those types of people to experience what it's like to push water through a bent hose. Walk through mud. That teaches you a lot and reveals your character and builds your character. But at some point, hard work becomes a lot easier. Hard work is not hard to me. I know this sounds, I hope this doesn't sound pretentious. But at some point, you like hard work becomes like a skill you begin to relish. Like working hard is like you become a bit masochistic. You become like, oh yeah, you want to bend that hose? Bend it again. I'll push through it. Like, you, you can get into that mode and you just go. Like, you can work so hard that your back breaks. You learn how to do that. Like, some people learn how to do that. But our lives don't have to be like that. Everything doesn't have to be like that. What if you could just release the kink in the hose? What if all your habits could just be like that? Well, most of your habits could just be like, all right, I'm going to release the kink in the hose. And if I want more hardship, I'll put the kink in the hose on purpose. Instead of just working dumb. Work smart. Conserve energy. Work smart and move faster. And you want to move fast and progress? So reducing f the friction associated with your habits practices the concept of environmental design, something we talked about earlier. So how do we reduce the friction, get it out of the kink and the hose for our habits? We talk about first with environmental design, the location, where. When deciding where to practice a new habit, it's best to choose a location that is already along the path of your daily routine. Habits are easier to build when they fit into the flow of your life. If you had a gym in your home, the friction of going to a gym may be reduced. If your gym was five minutes away versus 30 minutes away, again, friction reduced. Sorry for all the gym references. You're more likely to go to the gym on your way home from work if it's on the way because stopping doesn't add much friction or tension. And I've seen this with many clients of mine and people I know, if you go home after work, and you don't go to the gym yet, or you don't stop off and get the groceries or, or whatever you need to do, you have to exert so much more willpower, discipline and energy to now get up out of the comfort of your home, put your shoes on, get your keys, get your this, get your that, get in the car, start the car, drive the car, get there. Doing all of that requires a degree of willpower and energy that is likely already largely sapped after a long day of decision making and willpower exhausting in your day to day life. So why don't we remove the kink? Get a gym membership on a gym that is on the way or on the way home from your daily routine commute to work or whatever you do. Now the queue is right in front of you. You know, the decision you have to make between going to the gym or not is a left turn or a right turn. It's not that hard. You just turn 180 degrees or 90 degrees left or right. Doesn't require much energy. Compared to getting your ass up out of your home after you already get home, ooh, that ain't happening. Not for a lot of you. So make it easier. 
So that's location, where? Pick the habit that's gonna be easier to do. You're less likely to go up the stairs to do the thing. Why don't you put the good habit on the floor level, the, the ground level, make it easier. And you know how you can flip it? If you want the habit that you don't wanna do, the donut. You don't wanna eat the food. Put your kitchen upstairs. Put the cupboard upstairs. Put all the candy and calorically dense, hyper palatable foods, farthest at the end of the house away from the kitchen. Just have a little section. Put it in a safe. Well, that's a bit, probably some of you won't do that. But like, when you get the grocery bag, put a separate grocery bag that has all your candy and hyper palatable food. It's not that you can't eat it. It's just that maybe you want to manage the intake a little bit. Maybe when you open the packet, you eat the whole thing. So maybe what you can do is you can just put like half packets, segregate them in a bag, put these bags away in the garage. So now you make the habit that you don't want to do as much difficult and you make the habit that you do want to do easier by the pro manipulating the proximity and the location. Next, timing. Often we start habits in high friction environments and times. Women, girls, probably not the best idea to start your diet plan and your caloric restriction in your luteal phase of your menstrual cycle. Luteal phase being approximately the one week before your period. There's a whole bunch of physiological reasons for this. I won't get into it. It's not what this is for. Strength of side is for that. Your cravings and mood dysregulation is going to be at its highest. Probably not the best time to start something that requires the most discipline. Starting a new diet before going out to dinner with friends and a party? Maybe not the best time. Probably get down on yourself when you have to exert a whole bunch of willpower to either not eat the food in front of you or drink the alcohol in front of you or you'll feel bad after because you didn't exert the willpower and you caved. Writing and reading in the evening when the house is the loudest instead of the morning when it's the quietest. Timing, again, this, this house is empty, right? I strategically time when I do these for when everything is at its quietest. That's why people also get up at 3.30, 4.30, 30 in the morning so they can get a lot of the cerebral cognitive work done. Maybe they have a family, maybe you have children, children get up at seven, eight, whatever. Well, when else is it gonna get done? Either when they're asleep or when they're asleep or when they're at school or when they're out. So getting up early, staying up later. Those are some great options. You're removing points of friction around your timing so you can conserve more energy and achieve more with less effort. Reduce friction with productive habits and increase friction with unproductive habits. Make it easy, make it difficult. Meal delivery services. They reduce the friction of the time to prepare and cook your own food. I've done this many times, I'm doing this right now. Saves me time. If time is a valuable asset to me and it is equivalent of, it has a monetary worth to me and a higher monetary worth to me, the more higher your, the higher your per hour monetary worth is, the more you can justify decisions and systems that save time and reduce friction. How can you, how can we automate, eliminate or simplify? Automate, eliminate, simplify, eliminate the habits that don't need to be done, simplify the complex habits and automate the ones that are redundant and you have to do multiple, multiple times. If you have to do something more than five times in a day or a week, think about how you can automate it and systematize it. For example, if you're working with clients and you have people paying you recurring money, don't take their money on a machine every time, put them on a recurring direct debit system. You do that once, it is done. You don't have to interact with the transactions again, but they're gonna pay you weekly or monthly or whatever, recurringly, without you needing to dip your hand in and actually take the time to perform the transaction. That's a very common one in service-based industries, which a lot of you are in. Prime the environment for future use. Resetting the room is a concept we're gonna talk about now. The purpose is not to just clean up after the last action, but prepare for the next action. And what do we mean by this? Okay, so every room has its associations, bedrooms, kitchens, living rooms, whatever. So when you finish watching TV in your living room, arrange the pillows, the blanket, the remote, the way you found them. When you go to your car, throw at least one piece of rubbish away. You're resetting the room, you're priming the environment for future use. So when you step in that environment again, it is not a pile, a heaping pile that is building of mess, 
of things and of obligation that you have to do. When you take a shower, maybe you wipe down the toilet while the shower's warming up. And you do that every day, you just wipe the sink, wipe the toilet. Suddenly, you reduce the accumulated burden of day-to-day -day annoying life tasks that build up and eventually you have a mess and you don't even know where to begin. And you walk into that room, but even more importantly, you walk into that room and it's a mess and you are you don't feel, walk into a messy room versus a clean, mise en place, uh, tidy, well-groomed room. It's like someone who dresses in rags and torn up clothes. Someone who, someone who, what, what, what is more aesthetic? A person who has been worn the same clothes for months on end and is in rags and torns like a homeless person or somebody who is well kept and has just had their clothes freshly cleaned, ironed, and they're looking professional and generally visually appealing and aesthetic. Okay, most people are gonna say that the latter is more approachable, a bit more easier on the eyes. You apply the same principle to the rooms in our environment that we live in. And so when we go back into the room, we, the tasks that we now have to do in that room, our ability for doing them, how successful we are at doing those tasks will be dictated partly by how well kept the environment is. And if you didn't put the things away that you said that you needed to do and reset the room, then the room is not technically prepared for effective future action in that room. If the kitchen doesn't get cleaned up the next time you go in it, there's gonna be no room and no dishes to use to make your next meal. But if that was sorted out beforehand, there would be. Now the room is primed. So you do this small one to two minute task every day in every room and things will always stay tidy. You don't have to work hard, just proactively and, and intelligently. You make all the next actions easier this way. So whatever task you want to do, just set it out ahead of time. You set the gym clothes out the night before, so you see them when you wake up on the edge of your bed. You set the cooking ingredients for a healthy meal out the night before, so you don't reach for what's convenient. Well, actually, you make the healthy option convenient by it already being visually out there instead of the, the bun or the, again, hyperpalatable, calorically dense option. Whatever task you want to do, you just have to set it out and make a pre-implementation implementation intention through changing your environment. This is how you reduce the friction on the good habits and you increase the friction for the less productive habits because the greater the friction, the less likely the habit. The problem is a lot of people are adding a lot of friction to the, to the habits that they need to do, the productive, constructive habits. So it's probably a good idea to put away the video game console when you're done with it in the drawer as opposed to leaving it out constantly visually cueing you every time you walk in the room. Of course, you're going to go play it again. Why would you stop? You could do that all day. That's why I can't own a console. Not now. I got too much shit to do. I got life. I don't want to denigrate video games. I think they can be a great outlet. Don't feel bad if you play video games. I played video games. Take the batteries out of the remote after each use if you want to watch less television. Before you switch on the TV, make a deal to yourself to say the name of the show before you turn it on in order to mitigate mindless viewing and the time and it's gonna take for you to search for the perfect whatever. That's happened to me before. But usually there's an intention, like I'm going to do this. It's not mindless. Make an intention before you take the action. Leave your phone in a different room when doing work to maximize productivity. For me, it's airplane mode or the phone is off. Always when I'm sleeping. And now, this has been a really big help to me. A lot of people get distracted when they're exercising, working out uh, with their phone. You know, my, 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 it's got, got to be now in airplane mode because I noticed, you know, you end up, your rest periods and your time in your session is takes longer if you're... You know, while you can be technically productive in between, you know, you're resting uh, to do things in between, it doesn't need to be done then. Like it, your session ends up taking longer. And so that's a, that's something that I've done where I've manipulated my environment. I've, I've made the, just bang, bang, two buttons. The friction is so, like, it's made so much easier because now you're not getting hit with notifications. You, you reduce the friction of having a better quality 
uh, session or whatever you're trying to improve the quality of, a more productive time. So if you know you're gonna grab that phone, social media, another thing I do is like I delete certain social media apps and only reinstall them when I need to. Like I'll, 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 I'll literally download the app, I'll use it for like one message and then I'll delete it and I won't reinstall it again until I know I need it. And so I'm not triggered by notifications and I'm not triggered by even to look at it, to even be aware of it, to click on it, just to even out of mindless habit, just to check. So if you know there's a particular app that is queuing you a lot and you would know you're spending a lot of more time in it than you want to, that's something you could possibly do to increase the friction of that habit because it takes a while to download something. Like you got to search it, then you got to download it, then it's got to download, then you have to sign in again. Like you're probably not going to do that. That's way too much friction for most people. So then you're going to be more effective with your time, more deliberate. So then we finish with the question, how can we design a world where it is easy to do what is productive and healthy and harder to do what is unhealthy and, and, and destructive? So we redesign our life and environment so the actions that matter most are also the actions that are easiest to do. Remove the kink in the hose so you can live a more effective, more productive, better life. And that's chapter 12, the law of least effort. Next chapter is stop procrastinating by using the two minute rule. Thank you for watching, paying attention. If you want to hop on an email list, you can go to alexandermanuel.com and be notified of new things that I put out to the world there. Or you can see these on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram at Alexander Emanuel on everything. Links all below. You can buy the book, link below. If you're interested, which I would recommend because I'm only summarizing. I'm summarizing. I'm analyzing, adding commentary. Like there's there's diagrams, there's research, there's other things, there's resources that uh, James Clear puts up that aren't included here that I would really recommend. This is just a gateway. It's a vessel for you to dive further into the concepts if they are valuable and if they intrigue you. This is just my honest mental psychological ramblings over other people's incredible work. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.